Hello everybody, today I have a very exciting video to show you. This is part 3 of Case Labs S3 custom paint tutorial. Today we're going into actual color so you can see how the case is going to look like, which is very exciting. And also, and we're not only showing painting of the case, but also painting of variety of accessories that I also supply to Hanover because I would like to have all optical drive and um, bay reservoirs and stuff like this look really nice. So he will also taking care about it and the uh, entire build will be looked totally amazing i'm pretty sure so enjoy this installation of the video and we start need start thinking about the name of this build so your suggestions put it down here we have a couple ideas already but uh, you know maybe something come up with something really sharp and uh, we'll take it thank you very much for watching thank you for support does mod enjoy the video Welcome back guys, part 3 is here, Case Labs Mercury S3 paint tutorial, taking the light primer gray to the milk pearl. Um, last episode we showed some uh, black primer seal being sprayed, so the entire case right now, all the pieces have the black primer sealer on it, and it's ready to go. And this time I'm just going to grab a panel and we're just going to start shooting. Um, I have not tested this color yet, so basically we're going to be doing this together first time. Um, what you see is what I see. And if it works out and everything looks pretty good, we'll just keep going down the line with all the parts I already have uh, sealed. Um, also, Dasmode has shipped me some parts, uh, some fans, some brackets, uh, some face plates. We're going to uh, actually cover some aerosol can spraying too. Um, I'm out of etch primer for HVLP, so I'm going to be using a Dupacolors uh, etch primer out of the can. So we'll cover some aerosol shooting, and then also some plastic primer out of an aerosol can. So we'll go into a little bit of uh, how to treat plastic when you're going to cover with color, uh, some of those uh, prep preparation steps for the plastic, and uh, this one should be pretty good. Um, We've got, uh, I'm actually pretty excited to see this color. I have, I've been, uh, been kind of busy with work, so I'm really excited to see what this mocha actually looks like. Um, first, we'll do the base coat, and that's going to dry uh, flat. Until we add the clear coat over the top of it, we're really not going to see the, the luster come out of it. Um, but it'll give me a really good indication of how this pearl is going to lay up over the... Uh, over the black uh, sealer we already have on the panels, so I'm excited. Let's get started. All right, guys. First thing we'll do is after these parts had sat for a while, it's got some uh, you know a thin layer of dust on it, so we're going to take that off, and we'll just blow that off real quick with some air. Take a little uh, surface cleaner again. Of course, I don't have my safety glasses on, but maybe I can find them yet. Yeah, right here. Make sure this stuff doesn't go in my eye again. So that's not any fun. and wipe down this surface real quick and like I said in the introduction here this is going to be a first for me on this color I have not tested it so what I'm doing is picking the easiest panel to fix if something goes wrong oh, nice flat <clears throat> surfaces no slotted metal anything like that so that cleaned up Take a tack cloth to it. One thing about surface cleaner, it uh, evaporates quite readily. So you don't really worry about too 
much of that hanging around after you apply it and it's gone pretty much in seconds. Just make sure this is uh, completely contaminant free here. Then we'll tack it once I get into the booth. So let's mix up uh, a little bit of this boat pearl. It's a one to one mix ratio. That means one part paint, one part reducer, equal parts. Wow. I don't know if you guys can really. Now my camera is not going to pick that up, but it is absolutely beautiful looking on the lid. Well, I'll have to take this part out in the sunshine after it dries, even though it has no clear on it. We'll have to take a look at what it looks like. So, take the stir stick, stir this up real good. I can feel there's quite a bit of uh, solids on the bottom. Most likely all the pearl is sitting on the bottom. Yeah. So let's make sure if you're going to be using quarts of paint and using an HBLP gun and compressor setup, either shake the hell out of these cans or stir them real good. Man. Wow. <laughs> That is a cool looking paint. I don't know if that's going to be picked up or not. I bet he can't strap some wheels on this case and drive it around town because god dang. Man, this is a good looking paint. Alright, you know, I, I have a good feeling about this. We'll go uh, four ounce total, so we'll go two ounces of paint. and two ounces of reducer. Get this loaded up into the gun. And we'll get the spray in. find out what happens. I'll get the gun set up here as best I can and we'll go from there.
Well, it looks really good. It's kind of dark in here. <laughs> I might have to reskin this booth here sooner or later. I'm not getting all the light I used to. Since all the overspray is brought, uh, built up on the uh, interior walls here. But from what I can see, it's pretty fantastic. Also, this uh, color clear gun I use is more of a hand cannon than my little primer gun. It really puts out some material. If I notice in the video, it got awfully foggy in here, so I'm going to get out of here. Alright guys, let's have a quick look at uh, how it turned out here. Um, the pearl really, really stands out in direct sunlight. Pretty amazing in the sun. So, um, What I'm going to try and do is move around a little bit, catch a little bit of it. Focus here, there we go. How nice that pearl stands out when light hits it. Depending on where you have your case inside, if you're a bit next to a window or something where you get some natural light, you're going to see some uh, some pearl light up on it. Let's see how that pearl dances around. We just move it ever so slightly. You can see the color dance on there. Really amazing paint. And turned out excellent. Um, this is without a clear coat too. So once I get uh, oh, probably about three coats and then uh, polish and buff it out and polish it, it's going to be uh, simply amazing. I mean, it looks good right now. I'm just drying flat. So pretty awesome. Um, I think I noticed one little spot. Let's see if I can get in on it. I doubt we're going to be able to, uh, no, I won't be able to do it. It's just one tiny little piece of dust. So you can actually wet sand this stuff with 600 or finer. So that's what I'm going to do. And then uh, recoat it. And you actually have. A window of seven days before you absolutely have to put the clear on so I'm not gonna wait that long but you have quite a while if you have uh, you know if you get busy doing something else and you got the base color down you didn't get the color the clear coat on you got seven days to work with this stuff so what I'm gonna do is there there's a spot and it's right in here right there kind of bugging me a little bit it's just a tiny little piece of dust but what I'm gonna do is just wet sand that area real lightly take top off of it and then reapply the, the base coat so so far super happy <laughs> I think Dasmond's really gonna like this color so um, we'll move on to the other pieces all right guys so we're out in the garage to apply some Dupacolor self-etching primer out of an aerosol can. Um, this is the part, or one of the brackets, that Dasmo has sent me to paint. So, first of all, what I've done so far to prep this is scuff it lightly with uh, with scotch Brite pad and then uh, clean it up with a little bit of surface cleaner and tack it off with a tack rag to remove all the dust that was on it after I did that. So, dupe color self dusting primer out of a can. Brand new can. Shaking it now for about two minutes. Pop the top. If you're wondering why I'm not wearing a respirator, I got about a five knot cross breeze through the garage here, so I'm not worried about breathing in any kind of uh, bad things here out of this can. So we'll just use a handheld hanger here. That way I'll be able to turn this uh, in uh, multiple directions. So let's get started here. It's pretty dust free. So I can just start shooting it. So we'll start with the hardest part first on the inside.
about six to ten inches, six to eight inches away. Boy, any kind of uh, heavy buildup or any kind of drips that are going to start forming in the cans too close. Two minute dry time be between each coat. So not very long, you don't have to play around with this stuff too long at all. And shooting out of the aerosol can, if you're just starting out, it's a great way to learn about um, hand speed and uh, distance from your from the objects you're painting. I mean this is how I started um, quite a while ago was with spray cans. Not all of us uh, you know, I didn't know anything about HBLP or compressors or anything like that. I had no uh, no idea about even how to use it, how much stuff costs, anything like that. But uh, as time went on, obviously I've uh, matured out of these aerosol cans and into something a little more extravagant as far as painting goes. Now, to me, that's you know. Let that dry for about two minutes. And probably one more coat. Uh, this stuff is two to three thin coats. So um, after you're done with this, 30 minute dry time before you can sand it. But I'm not really worried about texture on some bracket like this that's going to be. Part of his res, I believe, so um, I'm not worried about some super microfine finish here, so I'm not going to uh, sand this edge coat at all. Alright, guys, there it is. Two uh, light to medium coats. Got pretty much 100% uh, hiding out of that. When I say hiding, I mean I don't see any there at all. Seems to be a pretty good product right out of the can. I'm a big fan of Dupa Color stuff anyway. If I had to use aerosol, it's pretty much Dupa Color stuff. Um, other than uh, colors. If I have to use colors out of a can, I'm going to have it custom mixed, but uh, that's pretty much a thing in the past. Now that I can buy paint and quartz. So, that's it. Alright guys, what I have here is the uh, faceplate for a DVD drive, or Blu-ray burner. And it's plastic, so what I did is actually wash it with uh, mild soap. And uh, not extreme, not boiling water or anything, but hot water to remove any kind of uh, agent that was on there when they released it from the mold, kind of release agent. It might have been on the plastic. And then lightly scuffed it, take off any kind of uh, white lettering they had on the, uh, on the tray portion of it and then cleaned it with a solvent and then tacked it off. So it is ready to be primed. And what I'm going to use is uh, Martin Senior Adhesion Promoter. Now you, there's all sorts of uh, plastic primers out there but this is, happens to be the one that I have on hand. Um, 15 minutes to dry and I think it's uh, it's actually a clear primer. Now, I'm not too concerned about that because, as you can see, we have a black plastic here. So the mocha when I cover this is I think that's going to be just fine. Um, actually, I could seal it too, but the most important thing here is to get a plastic primer on first. Even if I would spray the, the sealer on here, uh, the most important thing is the actual plastic primer.
So, this stuff's good for all sorts of plastics. The uh, only thing it excludes is Lexan, so we're obviously not working with any of that. But, let's see what happens. Just love a nice breeze here in the garage. It's about 78 in here, so perfect peeing temperature. detergent, mild soap, just to get the release agent off, and scuff it. If you have any print, like I had some white uh, print from their factory, which I didn't want on there, um, so I just used my scotch pad and um, took that off, just scuffed it right off, came right off, so. and then uh, followed up with a, uh, with a cleaning solution. And then uh, with the tack rag, and then uh, plastic primer. Not too exciting, but uh, I'd show that just for the heck of it. Um, the fan controller is actually a six channel, and I did finish that in uh, actually, you know, same process scuffing. Uh, surface cleaner. So that's done there. Edge primer. Another piece of Dasmode's puzzle. Of course same same steps for the surface preparation. I love that edge primer out of that can. It looks really good. And the coat that it puts on is just amazing. Uh, as far as the bond that it creates, acid etch, it's pretty awesome. You can't go wrong with uh, etch primer if you have bare metal. And I've also heard guys using it on plastic, but I'm not going to do that since I do have my own uh, plastic primer. So that's that. Maybe we can finish up with. Uh, a little teaser on the clear coat for the actual uh, Case Labs case. So I've got three panels now that are actually finished and ready for clear coat. I've had a couple of dust issues, you know, um, wet sanded that out and got a nice uh, tour. I'm really happy with it. So let's move on to that. Probably the worst part of any paint job is clear coat. So we're gonna see what happens.
guys, this is the end of episode three. Um, next episode will be the final episode in the uh, Case Labs Mercury S3 paint tutorial. I'll uh, cut and polish this clear coat and assemble the case. Um, then we'll be done. So thanks for watching and stay tuned for part four.